Today we're going to talk about how to first start out using a bull gouge. We usually come to wood turning with a woodworking background. And you might be thinking, well, you know, a bull gouge is kind of like a, a n other wood gouges or a chisel, kind of like this one here. And you basically just go at the wood and just scoop it out. Well, it's not quite that simple. There's more to it than just scooping out wood and just removing material. And keep in mind, we don't have a stationary piece of wood here. We've got a very fast rotating piece of wood. So if you go into a gouge, if you think about gouging into wood, a lot of times you, as you go in, you get stopped and you have to push harder and things of that nature. Well, if you get stopped, with a rotating piece of wood that's called a catch and it's going to be it's going to throw the bull gouge out and it's can be violent and can be shocking okay so we don't want that to happen instead we want to make smooth cuts so how do we do that all right first of all we have to think of these two tools different a, a chisel or a traditional hand gouge is not the same as a bull gouge totally different okay the mechanics of the bull gouge are very unique and we need to take a closer look at what the bull gouge anatomy is first well first of all we have the the main shaft of the bull gouge and then we have a flute which is this hollowed out area in the center okay that's going to help for us to remove material and it's going to go flying away with that up in the front of the bull gouge we have the top edge this u shape that makes the top edge here is the the cutting edge okay that's that's where all the action is going to occur below the cutting edge is the bevel you can see that up front here but this this in this particular bull gouge this is a swept back bull gouge and the bull gouge profiles can be different i'm going to cover the different types of bull gouges in a different video so you can check that out but for right now just know that this is a swept back bull gouge this bevel in the front this bevel angle and the sides that's really critical for guiding this tool as it cuts. Now the other aspect or other point of the bull gouge we need to be aware of is the heel. That's the bottom of the bevel. So we have the cutting edge at the top, the bevel that wraps around, and the heel. Those are our main areas of concern. Let's take a look at something from a different perspective here. David Ellsworth uses a really good analogy of whittling that turning bulls with a bull gouge is a lot like whittling. Let's take a closer look at that. If we use the idea of this bull gouge being like a traditional wood carving tool and we just approach the blank and try to carve out material, what's going to happen is this is going to overload the front of the bull gouge. It can't possibly cut out that material that quickly. And what happens is, is you're going to get a catch. The tool is going to be jerked back and potentially the wood will become damaged and things of that nature and you're going to get a very rough cut instead we want to make smooth cuts now let me explain the concept of gouging in this bowl in just a little bit different way if you were to take a piece of wood and you were to take a whittling knife and you were to apply the knife straight into the wood to try to cut it you're not going to get very far well that's the same concept of as coming to the bull gouge and just trying to scoop out material so what would be a better way for the whittling knife to cut this wood? Instead of going straight in, what if we turn the knife, rotate it at about a 45 degree angle? Look what happens. All of a sudden we can make a pass across there at 45 degrees and that's straight. Now we've taken this angle 45 degrees this way. What if we also rotate this way 45 degrees and look what happens. How much easier is that to remove material? Why? Well, if we look at what's happening, instead of being pushed straight down where there's a big area of material that's trying to be removed at once, here we've, we've reduced the amount of area that's cutting. We turn the angle also at another 45 degrees, and I'm using 45 as just kind of a rough idea, but you get the idea. We're putting two angles on this. All of a sudden, I'm only using a small portion of the blade but that small portion of the blade can cut this material very easily. Well, guess what? The same concepts of applying angles to a whittling knife is exactly what we're going to do with the bull gouge on the bull blank. Let me show you how that works. Another concept that we need to be aware of is where the center of the bull blank is. When we rotate the bull blank, we can see the center's right there, okay? What we want to do is we want the cutting tool and we want the tool rest adjusted so that the 
bull gouge is cutting on the center line. So right there, we're gonna bring it up a little bit. Now, if you wanna learn more about the tool rest, make sure you check out my video. It's all about how to handle the tool rest. But essentially what we wanna do is we want our cutting edge that's gonna cut right on the center line of this bull blank. So over here, we talked about the bevel. The bevel is going to ride parallel to the surface of the wood as we move across. That's called riding the bevel. And guess what? I've got a video for that too, so be sure you check that out. But when I do this, what's happening is that cutting edge, instead of being presented into the, gow into the blank like this, we've turned it on its side. And it's at a 45 degree angle here. Plus it's got a curve. So it's only a small portion of that tip is gonna be engaged. Let me show you how this works. And then to, to start a cut like this, you're basically just gonna start a little ledge. See right, see right there how there's just a very small area of the blade is cutting the, the wood. That's what we're looking for. And that's how we're gonna make nice clean cuts across the, the bull blank surface. A couple other things to be aware of. The, the way that I'm moving this tool is not by using my hands. I am, I am actually holding my left hand up against the tool rest and sliding it across here, but I'm, I'm holding the tool in this hand firmly and I'm also holding up to the top of the handle with my other hand. My hands are not moving when I make this pass. Let me back this up so I can show you. So I'm going to, I'm going to get in position and I'm going to introduce the tool. I'm actually gonna pick up this previous cut. I've got the angle on the bull gouge, which is a slight angle. Look at the movement in my fingers and my hands. There was no movement in my fingers and hands, were there? No, where did the movement come from? It came from my core, okay? So I've, I'm relaxing my legs and I'm, I've got my knees flexed a little bit and I'm literally just using my body weight to make this move. This is how you're gonna make clean, smooth cuts with a bull gouge. Now, if you, if you just try to, here, I'll, I'll keep my body stationary and I'm just gonna use my hands. I'm just using my hands. Now, I'm, I'm exaggerating this a little bit, but that is what happens when you use your hands and your arms to move, your, to move the tool across here. You don't have as much control. There are too many joints in our fingers and arms and all that that can make too many different motions. Instead, you keep the tool close to your body, up tight, in position, at the angle you want, with the bevel parallel to the cutting surface, and then you let your body motion and your body weight shift make the cut. It's that simple. Here, let me show you. Actually, my tool rest needs to be rotated just a little bit. Now, the other thing too is the tool rest shouldn't be right on top of the wood. It should be like in, right here, I've got it about a half inch away. So I'm gonna make a clean cut all the way across from the back, from the edge into the center. Okay. The other thing to keep in mind too is if you notice my pace, the center of this of the bull gouge or the bull blank does not rotate as fast as the outer side. They actually rotate at the same rotation speed, but it takes it takes this area much longer or much longer time to rotate completely than this outside. The outside speed of this is a little complicated, but if you think about it, this outside rim has to rotate around really fast. So you want to, as you get close to the center, slow down. And here's the other thing that's a common mistake is to cut too quickly. If you cut too quickly, what happens is you get almost like these, these old vinyl record lines in here. The, the woodwork has, <clears throat> excuse me, if you turn, if you, proceed too quickly or at too quick of a pace, what happens is you don't allow enough time for the 
the wood to come around and be cut cleanly. So you have a clean cut area and you're actually making, making just a really big swirl pattern because you have a clean cut area and then you're skipping an area, another clean cut area. So that's how you get a lot of tool marks. So take your time, just go slow and use a, a very controlled angled cut into the, into the turn piece. Okay, so that is essentially how to make a really clean cut using a bowl gouge. You remember, what we're really doing is we're using more like a whittling angle versus a gouging or digging maneuver because the digging maneuver is gonna cause all kinds of issues. The cut or the name of the cut that I'm explaining to you is called a push cut because you're literally pushing forward into the bowl. Now you can turn an entire bowl using just the push cut. There are other techniques and we'll cover those in other videos, but for right now, let's practice with the push cut. Glenn Lucas uses a technique of taking a red marker and going right down the center of the flute with the red marker. And the concept of that is, is that if you're ever seeing that red marker, the flute and the rotation of the tool is too open and is probably going to cause a nasty catch. So what you want to do is you want to have the tip of the tool pointing in the direction of the cut. Never open and never back. Okay, so let's, let's make a cut here using the push cut in this technique. Now remember, when you start a cut, just, just give it a second to create like a ledge to get the, the bevel started. And also notice how the bevel on the bowl gouge is parallel with the cutting surface. That's called riding the bevel. The push cut is probably the easiest technique to master. What I recommend is get a piece of wood that you really don't care about so much and just keep making passes. Keep many, making cuts over and over again until you feel comfortable making this push cut. Just do it over and over again until you're comfortable. That's gonna be the quickest way to get yourself familiar with the bull gouge and how to make it create a really nice clean cut for you. Remember the angles. We're not coming in digging out. Instead, we're at an angle here and we're at an angle here. And that angle is creating just a small area of the tip that is doing the cutting. Now remember, we're not digging into the wood like a traditional hand tool. We're angling the bull gouge both this way and also upward. So a very small portion of the tool is actually doing the cutting. Let's look at this again up close. Here is the edge and gauge. You can see just that very top tip is what's doing the cutting. We're not trying to overwhelm the tool. And we're not trying to be aggressive with it and make this material remove instantly. Instead, we're making a slow controlled pass across the wood surface to make a really nice clean cut. Okay, so let's go over this one more time. We want to make sure that our cutting tip with the tool the way we're going to hold it, the cutting tip is on center and the tool rest is adjusted for that. If you are unfamiliar with the tool rest or if you need more information about the tool rest, check out my video all about the tool rest and how to use it. The other thing we want to do is we want to make sure that we have a controlled hand our control position of the tool and we're not moving our hands we're instead moving our body weight and leaning in essentially using shifting our weight to make a cut not moving our hands and then the most important thing is we're using the angles of the bowl gouge so that we're only using a small portion of the cutting edge to make the cut that's going to give us a nice clean cut every time i got to tell you i'm excited for you because you're on a journey now to learn probably the best tool imaginable for turning wood bowls. Once you master this, which you will, with practice and persistence, you will become proficient with this tool. Just don't give up, just keep practicing. Again, get some scrap wood and just turn it away, <laughs> turn it away. Don't, don't, don't be concerned with trying to make a bowl, just practice your cuts, practice your passes, and you're gonna get proficient with this tool. And then you're gonna see what you can do with it. 
So I'm really curious to know if you've used a bowl gouge before. If you haven't, and this is the first time you're thinking about using it, and you've liked this video, click the like button for me, but also leave me a comment below and let me know. I wanna know if this is your first time or if you've tried it before and you've had a little bit of issues with it, and let me know if this, is, if this video has helped at all. Also, click the subscribe button if you're not already subscribing, and be sure to click that bell. When you click the bell, when I bring out a new video, when it, when it goes live, you will be notified immediately. So you're going to be one of the first people to get to see those videos. So make sure you subscribe and click the bell and leave a comment below. Uh, also, if you haven't seen my website, turnawoodbull.com, and you're interested in making wood bulls, wow, I've got a treat for you. There are dozens and dozens and dozens of articles there all about different techniques and ways of turning wood bulls. So be sure to check that out. It's turnawoodbull.com. All right, and like I always like to say at the end of my videos and the end of my articles, until next time, happy turning.